Hey everybody, welcome back to Make It With Mod Podge. I'm so excited about today's video because I'm gonna share with you a new technique, a new old technique, I guess we should say. I'm Kathy Fillion and I've been doing this type of crafting for as long as I can remember. I'm going to show you how to stiffen fabric using Mod Podge Stiffy. And we're gonna use the stiffened fabric to create some pumpkin curly cues and I'm gonna show you how to create these really fun leaves. Now you can use these curly cues and these leaves on anything from wreaths to pumpkins to, we made these years ago for uh, place settings and I'm gonna throw a picture up so you can see what those look like. So this is just a really fun, easy technique for taking regular fabric like this here. I've got just a piece of flannel and once you're done with it, you're gonna have a stiff piece. Now, a lot of these uh, fabrics that are stiffened will go through your die cutters and things like that. Just please do it with caution, and I have found that most of the punches don't work so well on the thicker fabrics, but you're welcome to experiment. Today, everything that we're gonna be doing is just with scissors. So to get started, I wanna show you the curly cues first. And for the curly cues, we're going to start with just some cool, uh, batik fabric that I found at the fabric store. So these are the curly cues here. So this is just a couple of simple curly cues that I want to show you how to make. These are really, really easy to do. And if you want that sort of tattered, I'm going to show you that one more time. See that sort of tattered edge? You can go ahead and tear your fabrics. So to do that, you'll just snip a little section over. Okay, a little snip and then we'll just tear it. If you didn't want that sort of ragged edge, you would just cut a straight line. So I've got my little piece here that is just got that tattered edge. So my fabric is prepped and ready to be stiffened. So to create the curly cue, I'm gonna show you a dried one. We want to create a uh, piece that it can actually dry and wrap around. So what I find is the easiest is just a wood dowel. You can use a straw, but if you use a straw, you get a much um, smaller curly. So if you want the big, big loops like this, you wanna use a dowel rod. This is a, a half inch dowel rod, but you could use up to an inch, whatever you want. The larger it is, the bigger the loop you're gonna get. So I like to use parchment paper. I know the funny part about parchment paper is tape, basically nothing sticks to it. So grab a stapler um, because you're gonna need to staple it. So you're gonna wrap a section of parchment paper around a dowel rod or any kind of a, even a PVC pipe, whatever you want. And make sure you have a little bit of extra paper hanging over because that's where we're gonna staple it. So we'll just go ahead and roll that around it. And this is just creating a little form that our curly cues can set up on. So you can see I just stapled those ends there. And let's do that over there, just like so. So I've got my rod in there and then just my two little stapled ends just to hold the parchment paper in place. Cause I, I was trying to come up with any kind of solution for you like, oh, this tape works, this tape works. None of them worked. They all just peeled apart and it was a disaster. So I'm going to use some of my old tried and true pans that I use for my crafting. I've got uh, my Mod Podge Stiffy and I don't really like to shake it up, but if it's been sitting out for a while, you just wanna give it a quick, nice little turn. You can even kind of roll it, not aggressive, just make sure you're getting it mixed on the inside. But you don't wanna add like a whole bunch of air bubbles and, and oxygen to it. So I'm gonna go ahead, I've just got an old recycled cup, pour a little bit down in there. I don't know, that's about a tablespoon and then our strip of fabric that we tore, we'll just put right in there. And then this is where it's gonna get messy. This is non-toxic. You don't have to worry about getting it on your hands. You can wear gloves if you want to. So you go ahead, just get that completely coated. And then you want to flatten it out. So you don't really wanna wring it like this, because if you wring it, you might get a bunch of wrinkles in your fabric, which is also a cool look. If you're doing something for Halloween, maybe you want a bunch of wrinkles in it. Got a little thread there, let's get rid of that guy. So you'll just flatten it out, just very simply. 
And if you have extra, you can go ahead and kind of just use your fingers to press any of that extra out. Didn't get very much extra out there. Okay, now I've got my little form. So you're gonna start on one end and just lay it on there and then you'll just wrap it. And I like to wrap it and give it a little space in between. And that will create those nice, big, cool loops. Just wrap it around. Now one tricky part is you do wanna make sure you're wrapping it with the printed side of your fabric up. There we go. And you just wrap it around like that. It's, that's literally all you have to do. And then you just set it aside and let it dry. Let me get my hands cleaned off real quick. And then I wanna show you, so this is gonna set up and dry in about 40 minutes. Um, if you're in a super humid area, maybe a tiny bit longer, but in about 40 minutes, you'll be ready to go. So let's set this aside and I wanna show you, this is one that's been drying. I did this one yesterday and it just will peel right off. So when you're peeling it, you just kind of do a little twist as you go. You can already see that really cool curly Q shape. So some people call these corker, twists, corkers, spirals. You can call them whatever. I just think they're so fun. Look at how cute that is. Such a really fun embellishment. And then you can attach them to any kind of, you know, again, a wreath or whatever, or a pumpkin. For these ones, I literally just used a sewing pin. So I just attached it, sewing pin, poked it right into my pumpkin. You could of course use hot glue or craft glue or, or fabric Mod Podge even. It's really just that simple. Then you can just keep adding them. Let's grab a pin and just literally poke it right on in, just like so. And it just creates a lot of fun. You could do browns, greens, whatever colors you want. Just a really cool, quick embellishment using the Mod Podge Stiffy. Now I wanna show you the leaves next. It is one of my all time, for our, on my blog, for Thanksgiving posts, it's like the number one post and it has been for years is doing these leaves. And then I realized we've never even done a video on it. So I thought, let's change it. Let's show them how to do it. So for those, I'm going to use some flannel, flannel fabric, but I wanna show you, you can do cottons too. So I've stiffened up a bunch of fabric here. So let me show you what all of that looks like. I've got just some cool yellow. These textures are cool because when you cut it into a leaf shape, you just get some pattern. So that's kind of nice, doing sort of tonal patterns. I love this one. And look, see that's, that's just cotton fabric there, but now it's stiff. You can create all sorts of things with it. These are really good um, colors like this where you have that sort of all over pattern also, really fun for doing curly cues or leaves. You can do geometrics, it's, it's endless. And then this is great. Again, this is that flannel, so you can see how that is. So it works best with 100% cottons and flannel fabrics. And this is our flannel leaf here, so pretty. So for the fabrics, it's very simple. And let's see, let's get our little, <laughs> our little stand back over here. So for the fabrics, again, you don't really want to wring out your fabric. So I'm going to go ahead. You can do large sheets if you want. You can do smaller ones. I like to just go ahead and sort of squirt it right on there. You can put it in a bowl if you wanted to and saturate. But I find this to be just as easy using one of these lasagna pans. I pick these up at the dollar store and you can see how much love I have given them over the years. This same one I've used for a long time. I just keep covering it with more foil. So you just go in and really get that to soak in, just flattening it like that. Have a little bit more. And if you're wondering like how many leaves can I get out of this? How much fabric can I stiffen? All of those sheets that I just showed you plus all of these corkers and all of these leaves that I've been showing you, I did all of those with one bottle. So it really will stiffen quite a bit of fabric. Let's go ahead, add a little bit more and just rub that in. And then I like to sort of fold it over, make sure you're getting the back. 
and the edges. Sometimes it's like a little bit of the edge you'll forget. So go in and just make sure you hit those edges too. Just get it all saturated like so. Flatten it out. And then the best way to dry this, I think we're looking pretty good, is with a clip hanger. So you could use clothes pins if you wanted to. I just use these clip hangers, pant hanger. You clip it like that. And it's not saturated, it's interesting. It's not like it's gonna drip, drip, drip off. See, if you look here, there's nothing even dripping down. So then you'll just hang it to dry. Normally I hang it outside or I hang it in the bathtub. For right now, I'm just gonna set it right back down because I'm not gonna run off and do that. I'm gonna show you what you can do with your stiffened fabric. So imagine that we've hung it up and it's 45 minutes later and it's all dry. And I will show you what we can make. So here's my dried piece. Let's clean up my hands real quick. Oh my goodness, guys, I'm so excited. Fall is here. We're doing our fall crafting or Halloween crafting. Really, and nothing makes me happier except for maybe Christmas crafting. So I've just got some generic leaf shapes here and I like to use a pencil on the back side, okay? So on the back side of your fabric, you just go in and these you can print off any kind of leaf shape that you want. You'll just trace it. You could freehand it too. I just, these were called leaf coloring sheets. So you can really just use any kind of drawing that you want. Go in. And you can see I'm not even being exact. It'll just give you the hint of it. Now this is a really fun um, kid project too. Uh, you can stiffen the fabric and the kids can cut them out. It's non-toxic, so it's gonna be very kid friendly. You could string them up to make garland. Once you have it like this, you can just go in and it's gonna cut almost like a piece of cardstock does. So you just go in cut out your shape. So I'm gonna speed this up for you guys. And there we go. We've got a beautiful, very quick and easy leaf. Now, what can we do with these leaves? Let's grab a pin and we can add it to one of our pumpkins here. So you can just keep layering these around. Just push pin it in. That way you can use these pumpkins if you wanna change out your colors from year to year. You don't even have to glue it down. I love the idea of making a bunch of these and stringing them up and creating some garland or using them for your wreaths. It's really endless. Or like our place card holders that we made. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this technique video. Let's just recap quickly. We made these really fun corker embellishments and it was so simple. Remember, we just used our uh, dowel rod here covered in parchment paper. Wax paper works good too, but parchment paper, paper works the best. So some fun, easy corker bows. And then these are really cool, really cool stiffened leaves endless ideas for what you can do decorating with the holidays. Thanks you guys. I'll be back here next week with another video and I hope you have a great week and so much fun crafting for the fall holidays. Make sure you use the hashtags plaid crafts and mod podge so that everybody at plaid can see what you're making. We'll see you next time.